Good morning, how are you? Welcome, nice to see you. Today we'll be talking about agape, okay? It's called Love Feast, okay? My name is Tish, this is my husband, Mike. Hello! Oh, you have the picture of the Last Supper. Yes, right there. Oh, perfect, okay. Okay. So, this class is intended to help us understand this picture. This picture is probably one of the most famous pictures. It's called the Last Supper. This is when Jesus informed them of how he was going to uh, proceed and wanted us to do this in memory of him. So this uh, class is intended to help us uh, give us an understanding by almost pretending that we're sitting at this table with him. And what these uh, apostles went through and probably some thoughts they were having and feelings they were having and uh, what they probably thought about Jesus sometimes. And uh, we'll give you an idea because unfortunately these poor guys here, when they were there with Jesus, that was very special, but they really didn't understand what Jesus was talking about at first. And it took them a while. It took till Pentecost till they fully understood. However, it's kind of funny when you think about it, and that's what we want to examine, what they kind of went through. So we'd like to do that as an example uh, by doing a little, we'll have a little scene here that we'll act out, and uh, we want to, to uh, get an idea and pretend that you are sitting at the table with Jesus. And what would you say? What would you think? when you, Jesus says the things that he does. And then after the little skit here that we'll do, we'll talk about it, okay? And that's the funny part, we'll talk about it. And then that's when you'll realize a lot more how much these poor guys, oh boy, when they didn't really get what he was trying. But they were trying to understand, but it was hard for them, okay? So that's what we want to try to do. So, Jesus uh, is obviously at the table. Remember, uh, here, uh, she will read the introduction to setting the scene. While she does that, I'll put on a little sheet to pretend I'm Jesus, okay? Go ahead. I knew my time was growing near. There was so much to do and so little time. I greatly desired to share the Passover meal with my disciples. It was to be our last. I had sent Peter and John into the city to a man who had a house with an upper room so that they might prepare the Passover supper. With the setting of the sun and the day of the Passover began, and Jesus reclined at the table with the twelve. So Jesus is here and he starts out with, I assure you, one of you is about to betray you. And it says, and the bolt, the bolt. And as he says that, all of the apostles say, Surely it is not I. Surely it's not I. So all of the apostles reply like that. And um then Jesus says, the man who dips his head in the dish with me is the one who will turn me over. The Son of Man is departing, the scripture says of him. But woe to that man who is betrayed, by the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for him he had never been born. And then he turns to Judas, who was the one who put his hand in the dish with him, and said, it is you. Who has said it? Judas looks at him and he's, and then Judas gets up, and as Judas leaves, all the apostles are, why Judas? Why? Why? And Judas leaves. 
So how many are left? Eleven. Correct. Okay. So then Jesus continues. As the rest of the eleven are around, Jesus says, I have greatly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I will not eat again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Father, I praise you and I thank you always and forever. Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And then Jesus takes it. He breaks it. And then he shares it. He passes it out to them. And they all eat. Eat, all of you. And so they begin eating. Then Jesus says, This is my Father, how great is your majesty, how wonderful is your name. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. So he takes a drink, and then he asks it around, and so they all take a drink. Now while they eat and they drink, Jesus is having some thoughts and he's thinking, as he's working with the apostles that are here, not quite understanding what's going on. So there's a song I'd like to have a gentleman sing with me to help you listen to the words and see what you can feel what Jesus was trying to talk about. So as the apostles are here, this song comes to mind. talk about this a little bit here. So, as she had read to set the scene, it said, I knew my time was growing near. There was so much to do and so little time. So that tells you Jesus is in a hurry here, isn't it? He greatly desired to share the Passover meal with his apostles, disciples. 
It was to be his last. He had sent Peter and John into the city to find an upper room in a house so that they might prepare for the Last Supper. When the sun was setting and the day of Passover began, Jesus reclined at the table with the twelve. Jesus says, I assure you, one of us is about to betray me. So right away in the beginning, he tells you that one of them is going to betray him. Well, it turns out it's Judas, huh? And even Judas goes, surely it is not I. And then Judas ends up leaving because they all wondered why it was Jesus. Uh, Judas that turned him over. So there's 11 left, and uh, Judas goes off. Now, Judas was, in a sense, told to go do what he was going to do. Judas went to go let the people know where Jesus was. Judas wanted them to meet so Jesus could tell them everything he knows, and they would all follow him. That was what Judas was thinking. But Jesus knew that's not how it was going to go. So Judas told him, you got to do what you got to do, and so he went. But uh, we found out why or who was the one because Jesus said, the man who dips in his hand in the dish with me is the one who will hand me over. Okay, so that's what he uses to tell you. Well, why does he use the dish? Why is the dish here? Ah, is when we find out about the bread, we take a look at this bread. The bread is fluffy or flat? Very good, it's flat. Now, did Jesus arrive to the Last Supper scene on time, early, or late? What do you think? That's your clue right there. It's flat. If you guessed early, you are correct. So early that the bread did not get to rise and be fluffy like for your sandwich bread or a dinner roll or something. It was flat. It didn't get to rise. So in doing so, it kind of resembled a cracker, didn't it? And so when they made their bread hard, they let it get really hard. If you take a hard bread and a soft bread, which one will molding go bad first? That's correct. The soft bread. So in Jesus' time to make bread when they made it last longer for days, they would make it hard. In the dish, they would put water or juice uh, like some sort of a juice with flavor, like a strawberry juice, or if they had an orange or something, they'd squish the juice, and they would take their bread and dip it in, and then they would eat the bread. And it wasn't so hard, it softened it up, so they could eat it without breaking their teeth or something. So this is why the dish was there, and that's why the bread was flat. Okay? So in doing so, this is how we find out Jesus uses the dish to tell us who's doing it. Because at the same time Jesus is dipping his bread in, so is Judas. But Judas wasn't paying attention when he was dipping it in. And that's why everybody turned and said, Judas, how could you? What? What? And then that's when he, Jesus tells him, you're the one. So, okay? So then Judas goes off. Now, he continues. He said, I greatly desire to eat this Passover supper uh, before I suffer. I tell you again, I won't eat again until the you know, fulfillment of the kingdom of God. So this is the part where he ends up getting arrested and all that stuff, and he doesn't eat for like 40 days and stuff. So, Father, and he goes, Father, I praise you in always and forever. So Jesus is asking God, in a sense, to bless the bread. Then Jesus said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Okay, now this is the funny part, because, think about it, you're at the table with Jesus. <coughs> you're at the table with Jesus. You never heard of this before, and 
he says, this is my body, take it and eat it. So while they break it and they take it and they're eating it, they're like, how is this his body? What's he talking about? What's he talking about? He's crazy. What does he mean by that? And then he turns around and he says, he says, Father, how great is your majesty, how wonderful is your name. In a sense, he's asking God to bless the, the, the wine and take this all of you and drink from it. And he now becomes, he says, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. He's making a promise with us with the bread and the blood of Christ. And so then he turns around and says, uh, take this all of you and drink from it. And this is what will make us one and help forgive our sins and do all this in memory of me. Now, so every time we go to Mass, did you notice when we get to go to church, Father has bread and wine and brought up as gifts. He at the altar puts down a tablecloth with corporal and then he blesses them and then they pass it out to us, those that are ready. That's the, do this in memory of me. That's exactly what we do in Mass. It's actually one of the most important parts of the Mass is that partake. So he re the Father takes the place of Jesus and reenacts and asks for the blessing. Jesus said God to come down upon it and bless it, just like Jesus did. So this is why we do that, and this is why we celebrate this idea is because he says, do this in memory of me. Now, to go back to the apostles, and this is their first time not understanding, it would be the same thing. Let's say you sat down at the dinner table with your brothers and sisters, your mom and your dad, grandma, grandpa, and let's say either your dad or your mom, let's say one of them, whoever's, whoever uh, uh, gets the table ready and stuff, they're sitting down and says, Oh, this is my body. Go ahead, take a bite. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? Or then how about this one? What if your mom and dad said, here, go ahead, drink my blood. Oh my goodness, uh, here we go. What? Mom, uh, are you okay, mom, dad? Uh, are you crazy? Well, if mom and dad did that to you, could you imagine the 12 apostles, the 11 apostles, when Jesus said that to them, this is my body, go ahead and eat it. This is my blood, go ahead and drink it. They probably thought Jesus was not so okay, but that's because they didn't understand yet. At Pentecost is when they fully understand what Jesus was talking about and understood then from there. So this is why we go to catechism and stuff to learn this stuff. So when we get to receive communion and we're old enough and we know how, we can respectfully understand what we're partaking in and the meaning and the understanding of what Jesus was trying to do. So this is the idea of the Last Supper. And uh, it's kind of funny sometimes when you think about it, like if your mom or dad was to do that, uh, that would be kind of silly and stuff. But with Jesus, he really said, this is my body and this is my blood. In Mass, if you'll notice in church, we even keep it safe. We put it in a tabernacle if there's anything extra. That's how important it is. Now, does it still look like bread and wine? Yes, it does. But is Jesus in there? Yes, we know that because it's blessed. And Jesus of God came up down and blessed it for us. Still looks like bread and wine, but we know Jesus is in there, and that's the miraculous part. Now, some people say, how do you know that? Well, easiest way to explain that is, is Jesus in you? Yes, he's in every single person. Can you show me? No, huh? Jesus? Hello? Jesus? No, you can't show me, can you? But you know he's there because you get that warm, fuzzy feeling. And Jesus never lied to us. So if he can be in us and we can't see it, see him, he can certainly be where he said he would be and promise that if we were to eat and drink, he would be there for us.
and help us. And so that is why it's such an important uh, thing that we do. Okay? Okay. We come together this evening to experience a unity which is both symbolized by and the fruit of agape. Agape is a Greek word meaning a love feast. In the early days of the church, Christians gathered to worship as a group to celebrate the Eucharist. However, many times these Christians gathered to share a meal in the unity that eating together can create. The day that the Lord rose from the dead, two men walked sadly from Jerusalem to a small town several miles away, which one of them had a house. Now they were so upset they wanted to get away from it all. As they walked along, a stranger joined them on the road, and they asked why they looked so sad. With surprise, the two men looked at the stranger and asked, Are you new here, that you don't know the things that have happened? And they continued to tell him about the leader that they followed, whom they had thought was the Savior, the Promised One, and he had been captured, tried, and executed. All their hopes and expectations were dashed to the ground. The stranger responded by explaining that God's ways were not like man's ways, and that if they considered that what had happened had been told through a prophecy. The Savior must suffer and die if man is to be saved. As the little groups arrived to the town of Amos, the, sum, the stranger said goodbye. Together, the two men asked him to stay with them for the night. It was evening. They entered the house and they were sitting together for the evening meal. Passing him the bread, the stranger gave thanks for it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them. And the acceptance of this bread, each of the men recognized the stranger as Christ, the one in whom they had been talking about. Tonight we share this bread and gather in this love. Let us pray that we too recognize him in each other and that the Spirit will reach out into the, our days that may that we may be ready for the day of the Lord. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sing. Okay? And the song is, They'll Know with We Are Christians by Our Love. So why don't you sing with us? We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. That was great. That was very good. Now we're going to do the scripture reading, and it's from John 15. And I'll be, I'll be the teacher, and Mike will be, you guys are the all. Giving thanks to the Lord who has shown us the greatness of his love.
by calling us together in his name this evening. Let us pray. Okay, let's pray for someone that's special. At this bread is made up of many grains of wheat. We, though many, form one body in Christ, all of us who share of the one bread. We are one in Christ Jesus, one in his love. Christ said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. We are one in Christ Jesus, one in his love. As the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. We are one in Christ Jesus, one in his love. Greater love than this no man has, than he laid down his life for his friends. We are one in Christ Jesus, one in his love. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, then as I have loved you, you also love one another. We are one in Christ Jesus, one in his love. Okay. Okay. So then, as uh, the when we go to Mass and we see that people receive communion, is it flat or is it fluffy? It's flat, just like Jesus had. So, in doing this in memory of them, we also... In Jesus' time, since it had nothing to rise, it was made of flour and water. What we receive in church, after it's blessed, is also only made out of flour and water. No other ingredients. Nothing else is there. Just like Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Okay, what I'd like Michael to do is explain to you what Passover is, because this is a, a Jewish holiday when they celebrate agape as in during the Jewish holiday. Passover. Okay, so Passover was the time, uh, that was the tradition when they used to remember uh, in the old days when Moses took them out of slavery and moved them. And so they would have a Passover meal. And so what they would do, this tradition is very Jewish, and they still do it to this day. And they have also a, uh, a bread that they use. It's like a cracker, uh, which is the body, matzah. And that's what this is. It's matzah. Do you have the box there? We can show them. And it's usually only available right around Easter time zone. Because uh, that's when it's popular. Here's a, just an idea of what it looks like, the box itself, matzah. Okay. And then um, they have a wine or a juice, uh, depending on the kids would have juice, and then the adults have wine. And then they have what's called bitter herbs, like small pieces of endive um, uh, and stuff. And that reminds them of the bitter times of their ancestors as they had to go through the process to get freed and stuff. And so it reminds them of that hardship. Now they actually have a special plate they use and they have everything in a position. They have a specific order. They eat these little items in. It's not a full meal in a sense, but it's a remembrance meal is what it is. It's a Passover meal. And so they still do this to this day as a tradition to remind themselves of the past and the hardship. So, uh, but we do this because we want you to see this is what we do in church in memory of him. Okay? Okay. So, well, thank you so much. It was good to see you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Okay? Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for watching and stuff. And uh, we'll see you again uh, for our next class. Thanks very much. Have a good one now. At the table of Bye bye. Lord, we come to the table of the Lord as one body formed in your love. We come to the table of the Lord as one. Oh
Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye-bye.